Today we're going to be talking about solving quadratic equations. So you can remember that quadratic equations in their standard form take the form of ax squared plus bx plus c where the a cannot equal zero so that you actually have this quadratic term. Okay, so before we get into ways in which we can solve quadratic equations, I want to do a little bit of review on how we solve equations in general. So looking at equation number one, um, and I suppose you don't have to copy these two down because um, this is a little bit of review. Um, you can just kind of look at that and say to yourself, well, what does x have to be in order for if I multiply x times 3 and then add 1, I get 7? And you could probably just look into it and figure out, well, if x was 2, then 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Um, and then looking at problem number 2 here, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to look at this one. So we come up with some rules and we come up with these um, rules of equality where we can subtract 5x from both sides and we come up with negative 6 is equal to negative 3x and then we know that it's okay to divide both sides by negative 3 and we come up with our answer that x equals 2 for this one. So that's just solving equations. It's like looking at an equation and coming up with a way to figure out what values of x make a true sentence. All right, so that was the review part. Now I do want you to copy this one down and this is problem number three that we're going to do together. And this one actually is a quadratic and what makes it a quadratic is the fact that it has that squared there. And if you look at it, try to look at that and think about the opposite of x squared plus 4x equals 0. What could x be? Can you think it through and try to come up with a value of x that would make that true? Okay. And some of you might be better at that than others. Um, it takes me an awfully long time to look at that equation and come up with some possible solutions. So we are here in Chapter 9 to look at some ways to solve quadratic equations. And today we're specifically going to be talking about a method where we solve this by graphing. Okay, so um, the graphing a parabola shouldn't be new. There should just be two kind of new steps on the ends um, to start this lesson. Okay, so the first thing is, is that when we graph on a coordinate plane, we need to relate x to y. So what I want you to do is recopy this problem where you make y equal to zero. You substitute in a y, and this is called the related function. Okay, so we're looking at an equation where the opposite of x squared plus 4x equals 0, and we're wondering, well, what can x equal? And in order to do that, we write the related function where y equals negative x squared plus 4x. Okay, so step number two is to graph it. All right, how do you graph a quadratic function? Well, you know, your first step is to find the axis of symmetry. So let's do that together. Hopefully you can press pause here and figure out the axis of symmetry on your own. Okay, I got x equals 2 for the axis of symmetry, and now I'm going to make a table of values. I put 2 in first in order to find the vertex. Okay, when I plug 2 in, I do 2 squared first is 4, then take the opposite of it for negative 4, and then plus 4 times 2 is 8, and so I get the vertex point at 2, 6, and I'm going to go ahead and graph that. Okay, then I'm going to try some more points by plugging in, let's say, 1, 0, and negative 1, and let's see how far I get. You should press pause here and try to graph the parabola on your own. Okay, and I'm sorry, I just realized I made a mistake finding the vertex. Um, when I plug in 2 and square it, I should have gotten 4, then the opposite of 4 plus 4 times 2 um, would give me a vertex of 2, 4. So apologies for the confusion. And I found that out when I went to plug in my 1, and I got 3 as an output. All right, and then I can plug in my 0, and I would get 0 as an output. And I'm just going to go one more. And if I plug in negative 1, then I get negative 1 minus 4 or negative 5, and I can graph that point. All right, so now I can get my mirrored points and a mirror across the axis of symmetry. So I have a point here and here and here. Okay, so all of this kind of stuff that we just did of the graphing should be mostly review. The only new piece so far is that related function. Okay, so here's the next piece. How do we use this graph to find out the solutions? Because remember, originally we were wondering, what could x be in this original equation up here? Okay, and if you'll notice, the first thing we did in writing the related function was we swapped out y for 0. So what we're looking for is a place on the graph where y equals 0. And where does y equal 0 on the graph? 
it would be anywhere along the x-axis. So we are looking for x-intercepts, all right? Anywhere where the parabola crosses the x-axis will be a solution to the equation, okay? So I see x equals 0 and x equals 4. So we now have two solutions for this equation, 0 and 4. And I'm going to um, check it by plugging them back in. Okay, the first one I want to check is 0, and you can see that if I square 0, then take the opposite of it, I get 0, and 4 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 0 does actually equal 0. And now I'm going to try checking the 4. All right, when I plug 4 in here, I get 16, and then the opposite of that is negative 16, and 4 plus 4 is, I'm sorry, 4 times 4 is 16, and that does equal 0. So both of those solutions work. So you can see that by graphing the related function, we can easily find solutions to um, a quadratic equation. Let's do some more practice. Okay, the next equation I want to solve is this one, and you can kind of take a look at it and see if you can figure out for yourself what do you think x equals there to make a true sentence, okay? But for now, the only way we know how to do this is to solve by graphing the related function. So the first thing I'm going to do is write the related function where I swap out y in place of 0. Okay, and now I'm going to take the steps to graph that quadratic function. So I'd like you to press pause now and get that quadratic function for parabola graphed um, on your own and then press play again. Okay, this one turned out to be a little bit of you know, a struggle, the axis symmetry is at three and a half, but that's okay. You can use your calculator if you need to, um, to figure out that when you input x equals 3.5, you get out put y equals negative 2.25. So continue from here. Okay, so there's what I got my for my parabola. Hopefully you agree. And then the new part that we're learning today is that the whole reason we did this parabola is so that we could look for the zeros or the roots that we call the x-intercepts. It's just some terms we use with quadratics to talk about the solutions. And the solutions are sitting there at the x-intercepts. So we can say the solutions are x equals 2, and x equals 5. And of course, we're going to go and check those. 2 squared is 4 minus 14 plus 10 equals 0. Yep. 5 squared equals 25 minus 35 plus 10 equals 0. And yep, again. So here we have two great solutions to that original equation. And it was all thanks to graphing the related function on all that work went towards that. So we're going to just look at a couple more, and then I'll see you in class. Okay, so we're going to do two more practice problems, take some notes on some vocabulary, and then we'll be all done. So the first thing you want to do here in this equation is, remember, we're after solving this to figure out x equals what? How would you solve that? That's our big question here. So the first thing you want to do is you need to get it set in standard form, which means get it set equal to zero. So in this case, that means to add one to both sides. Okay, once you've done that, then we're going to repeat what we did before, which is make the related function. So here we have a y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Okay, so now I want you to press pause and get this parabola graphed and see if you can come up with the solutions for yourself. Okay, so you can see that I've graphed this, and now I'm looking for the places where it intersects the x-axis or the x-intercepts. And in this case, there just happens to be one x-intercept, and that is one. So that is my solution right there. And let's go on and try another one. Okay, so I'm going to um, ask you to press pause now and try this on your own. And remember, we're after this idea. What is x equal? Okay, so hopefully you've gotten your axis of symmetry and you've gotten some other points and your parabola looks just like mine. And then in terms of looking at the solutions, again, I'm looking at where this parabola crosses the x-axis. And so I can see that it hits right there, somewhere between 0 and 1. And I can see that it hits there somewhere between negative 4 and negative 5. Um, so this method of solving a quadratic equation is not necessarily something that's going to work for every solution. So I can see that there are two solutions. I don't know exactly what they are. Um, I'm going to kind of leave it a question mark for now, and what I'd like you to do is bring this into class, and we'll talk about how to use technology and a graphing calculator to help you get those exact, what we call, roots or solutions or x-intercepts. So for now, best we can know is that there's one somewhere between negative 4 and negative 5 right here, and one root or solution right there between 0 and 1. Okay, so just to summarize a little bit, okay, um, I guess the things I'd like you to talk about is or like you to write down here 
um, is that quadratic equations can be solved in a variety of methods, including graphing and finding square roots, so, uh, and some other methods too, okay? Um, so I do want you to have that the, um, I'd like you to have this written down as well, okay? I'd like you to write down that the solutions of a quadratic function are the x-intercepts, okay? And I also want you to know that, um, okay, solutions of a quadratic equation and the x-intercepts of the graph of the related function are often called the roots of the equation or the zeros of the function, and I would like you to have those two terms written down. I've probably been using those words and you didn't know what I was talking about. So, um, okay, in a future course I also want to point out, um, though you don't have to write this down, okay, you will learn about the solutions of quadratic equations that are not real numbers, okay? In this course, solutions refer to real number solutions. Okay, so let's just one more piece of information here, and that is taking a look at these, and if you would please copy down the function and a quick sketch of the graph, the function and a quick sketch. All right, let's take a look at these. There's three different situations here. One of them is where the parabola crosses the x-axis in two places, so there's two solutions. This one has one solution. And this one has no solution, no real number solutions, okay? So if you just make a quick sketch of those scenarios where you can have a parabola that crosses in two places, a parabola that crosses in one place, and a parabola that doesn't cross the x-axis at all. All right, and that's it. We'll talk more in class tomorrow.